on the new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC. Call Jersey Central at 732-545-9282. Toll free at 888-545-9282. Watch Jersey Central live online at WCTCAM.com or listen on your smartphone with the iHeartRadio or TuneIn apps. Connect with WCTC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube by searching 1450 WCTC. And now back to Jersey's Morning Show. Jersey Central with Burt Barrett. 737, it's Jersey Central on the new talk radio WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey, coming up very soon. Your chance to win four tickets to see Steve Forbes, who will be at the State Theater downtown New Brunswick on Sunday, September 25th at 2 o'clock. Very interesting presentation called Leadership Lessons, the stunning parallels between great leaders of the ancient world and today's top business leaders. So we'll give you the chance to win that coming up very shortly. Let's get to the Jersey Central Newsmaker Hotline. Welcome in the president of National Estate Jewelers, Barry Blank, who is back with us for another edition of What's It Worth? Good morning, Barry. How are you? Good morning. I'm wonderful. How are you today? I'm doing well. Good to talk to you. And I've always wondered, Barry, when uh, it comes to coins, uh, you know, a half-dollar coin, a silver-dollar coin, for as long as it's in my pocket, it seems like it's worth the face value of the coin. But something happens where... All of a sudden, it becomes worth more or less than the actual face value of the coin. And I'm hoping we could talk about that uh, on today's edition of What's It Worth? Well, what, what happened very simply, in 19, up until 1964, there, was, there were things called silver certificates. And every dollar that was made, that a silver certificate was printed for, had $1 worth of silver behind it in the U.S. Treasury, probably Fort Knox. And there were gold certificates, too, where one, every $1 of that gold certificate was back with $1 of gold. In 1964, that was finished. You could have gone with a, with a dollar gold or a dollar uh, silver certificate, and you could have gotten a dollar's worth of gold from any Federal Reserve Bank. They, they, didn't, they stopped that. So now the, the silver certificates are just paper $1 bills now. So the coins are – same thing happened – where the silver coins were no longer silver. They were 90% silver. Now they're cupro nickel, which has no silver in them whatsoever. And there, there is an exception in the 65 to 1970 uh, JFK half dollars. They were now 40% silver, and some proof in mint coins were printed in, minted in 40% in, in, uh, silver. So you really got to know. Uh, that's, that's a you know, good question. Even the U.S. Mint uh, has to deal with uh, the rising cost of metals when it comes to minting coins. I, I, I guess that's the main reason yeah. for the change in the, in the composition of the coins, right? Well, well when, when silver, in, in, in 1999, silver was $2.75. Now it's $19 an ounce, plus or minus a few. So the cost of a silver dollar, uh, if we were making silver dollars out of silver dollars, would be there's a little le- less than a, an ounce of pure silver in them. Would probably be fourteen or fifteen dollars. Wow! So you couldn't you couldn't produce a, 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 a big one dollar coin, and even the small one dollar coins, the the ones like the Sacagawea, which looked like gold but weren't. Right, I remember the, those. Right, or the Susan B. Anthony's. Even those would probably be a dollar and a half, two dollars. To 250 in silver. So you couldn't even produce those in silver anymore. Wow. So in, ni- in 1964, they stopped putting silver in coins except for commemoratives and mint issues. Well, let's talk about the, there's a couple different types of coins, right? I think of the copper coins, they're pennies, and I think about silver coins, and there's even these silver coins uh, that have like an edge look like it has copper on it. There's there are three different coin types of coins, right? That, that is 100% true. Okay. It, it, from, from the beginning of time, we used coin silver, which was about – coin silver was just a term for the percentage of silver in coins. And it would be about 90, 80 to 90% silver. And uh, that was dimes, dimes, quarters, halves, and dollars. There, were, there was also a silver three-cent nickel. Um, that people that has a Roman numeral three on the back, but that was even made in non-silver at the time too, back in the 1800s. So you really got to know uh, the second type of coin, the cupro nickel coin, was started in 1970. I've got a, a 64, 65 is when it started, and um, that had no silver in it whatsoever. As for the copper coins, I don't know if you remember the story about Lincoln running after somebody for two cents that he shortchanged them. I don't I, know. I don't know that story. Eh. Wow. He ran. The, the, the story is he ran two miles or something like that after somebody to give them back their change, mm. and it was like w- two cents. And the thing <laughs> is that two cents, 
to de- then would buy like so much. You know, t- these pennies were also almost the size of a silver dollar. But um, th- these coins, uh, you could probably buy two shopping carts full of uh, full of groceries instead of what we what do we spend two three hundred for two shopping carts full of groceries today? Yeah, what are when two cents became slang for your opinion, right? Keep your two cents uh, to yourself, right? Very, very <laughs> probably, <laughs> right. probably. Uh, so anyway, at at the same time, just so you know, these big two one cent coins. Very often got lost, as pennies do, and they got buried in ground. And even those are going to be worth a dollar, even if they're really in terrible condition. But these coins in, in, in uncirculated condition could be worth hundreds or thousands of dollars. Wow. And I've, I've even seen a, an evolution over the years, too, of uh, you know something as simple as the penny. Some have uh, wheat on the back. Uh, some have an Indian head on the back. All different values uh, for those, too, Barry? Totally, and it really, you know, that we say in real estate, it's location, location, and location. In coins, it's condition, condition, and condition. So if you should find an Indian head penny, and don't polish coins, by the way, as we all know, that ruins them, it takes their value away, because we want, as coin collectors and numismatists, we want to see them in original condition, with the original oxidation. And um, you give me an Indian head penny, uh, it's an uncirculated condition. Mm-hmm. It's starting at ten, twenty, fifty dollars. You know, wow. it goes up into the hundreds again, the thousands. So it's it's it's. So you first had we, the ones we think of as the first ones were the Indian heads, but it goes back way before that. There were pennies, there were large pennies, then there were uh, flying eagle cents, and then the Indian head, then the wheat cent. That wheat is just meaning that if you look where the back of the coin, also known as the reverse. Um, you look at the back of the coin, there are two very geometric things that look like that they wrap around the coin. And they're actually, if you look closely at them, they're wheat sheets. And uh, after that, it was the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, so most people don't know that these were all copper. Even the Lincoln Memorials were copper until about 18, uh, 1980. So, um, and, a, and a penny cost about three cents to make in copper, which oh, is man. why we don't use pennies anymore, copper pen, copper and pennies anymore. They feel light, like they're uh, aluminum and just plated with like a real shiny copper-like kind of finish. Uh, is it aluminum it, in a penny? No, it's it's another base. It's not aluminum. I'm okay. not sure what, I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't recall the right this second, but I will tell you there was an aluminum penny minted, I think it was 1974. It was given out to either Senate or Congress, and uh, those are extremely rare. Um, and they were, it was supposed to go into production and never did. The Mint called them all back, and there's supposedly a couple out there worth hundreds of thousands of dollars each. I recently, somebody, one of my clients brought one in, and we sent it to two grading services, only to find out that both of them agreed that it was definitely not authentic. Wow. So had it been, huh. it would have been hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. He claimed Whoa. he found it on the white on the White House lawn in the time <laughs> oh, period man. it was it was minted. Wow. I would love somebody listening right now, Barry, probably has a plastic bag sitting in their dresser with coins that they've been collecting for years. Maybe it was left to them, uh, oh here's your your mom's, your dad's coins, hold on to these or whatever. I would love if somebody had those coins, call your shop, make an appointment and just bring the bag over and just go through them one at a time. And this is worth That's this right. and this is made of that and You'll have someone who will sit with them and go through the all the coins, the entire collection, right? Yeah, we have a, we have a senior numismatist, Gary Coos, who I'm sure you've seen at the Health and Wealth Forum. That's uh, right. A couple of years ago, and uh, he is so knowledgeable. He used to own a coin in and stamp auction gallery years and years ago. He is the foremost expert, knows more than most people on coins, and he can tell you the mintage. He can tell you the the the, the, uh, the you know the value, the grading. I can grade. I'm a I'm a numismatist myself, but he is he's really amazing, um, and uh, we we can do anything there. That's we, great. We'd yep. love to buy. Yep. National Estate Jewelers A plus rating with the Better Business Bureau and a zero zero complaints in 17 years of working with the public there, uh, which is something to be real proud of, Barry. That's for sure. The uh, free evaluation days, the verbal evaluation days, are continuing in celebration of uh, Barry's weekly appearances with me here on WCTC. So take some things, take some coins over for some free verbal evaluations. And we look forward to next week. Are you going to be taking some a some little bit of a break for yourself and then uh, coming back with us next week, right, Barry? Yeah, we're actually going to Myrtle Beach on Wednesday night and coming back Monday night, so I'll be ready to go on Tuesday morning. You're going to be walking through the beach there with your metal detector looking for coins? Do you do that? Uh, 
No. Uh, maybe no. diamonds. Diamonds. <laughs> diamonds. Right? Make it yeah. worth your while. You never eh? know. You know although, although I did <laughs> hear about somebody that found a button from George Washington, one of George Washington's uh, uh, crew, and it was worth a lot of money. How do you prove that? Really? I don't. I don't know. Wow. I saw. The, I saw a copy of the button. I saw pictures of it, but it does happen. Yeah, so like a diamond, like a diamond in the rough. You know? I guess so. Yep. The, the one last thing, Barry. I don't know if you saw it in the news last week. There was actually a, a truck, a giant tractor trailer that was transporting blank coins, like blank pennies, from the Philadelphia down to Washington D.C. to be minted. The truck was in an accident, and overturned. All of Route 95 was covered with thousands and thousands of blank pennies that they had to pick up one at a time. Yeah, I didn't hear about it, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I try to keep up on things like that, but uh, interesting. Copper blanks by the hundreds of thousands yeah. just scattered on Route 95. <laughs> one wow, day that's last amazing. Week. Well, they call them plant shirts with a P like Peter, plant shirt. Is that what it's and called? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Good stuff. That's what it's called. All right. Well, Barry, thanks as always. And enjoy your time there in the Myrtle Beach. We'll talk next Tuesday for another edition of What's It Worth. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Barry Blank, there he goes. Uh, my guest on the Jersey.